Before we get into the video today, I'd like to tell you all about the 23rd Archive, today's sponsor, where you can read free science fiction, dystopic, zombie superhero apocalypse fiction, which is as epic as it sounds, as well as choose your own path adventures and more. It's completely free, though I definitely recommend subscribing to their Patreon to support independent storytelling. You might even see something from yours truly in the future. The link is in the description. Nothing gets people into the sciences like dinosaurs in space, which is really no surprise because both of those things are awesome. But what if you could combine them? While astronauts have taken dinosaur fossils into space before, the first one being Hadrosaur Myosaura Plebosaurum, which was carried onto Space Lab 2 by Lauren Acton in 1985, these types of stunts have never amounted to much more than trivia. Not exactly the holy grail of scientific outreach programs that educators and science communicators were hoping for. But what if I told you that there might be dinosaur fossils on the moon? You'd probably call me crazy, like one of those UFO guys or ancient aliens dude, whose name I can never fully remember. Here's the thing though, there might actually be dinosaur fossils on the moon. We're gonna dive into the research that points to that outcome. But first, be sure to hit that like button, comment what you think a dinosaur that's been launched into space would sound like, Smash that subscribe button, ring that bell to never miss a video, and check out the Patreon. I'm Eric Malachite, author of The Man Without Hands, and this is Science Get. To understand how dinosaurs and other prehistoric fossils could wind up on the moon, First, we need to understand how asteroids lead to the ejection of meteorites from a planet's gravitational field. When planets like the Earth and Mars get hit by large asteroids, like the one that killed the dinosaurs and the one that is thought to have killed Mars's core, a lot of material gets ejected into space. We know this because we've found several ancient Martian meteorites here on Earth, and those meteorites had some surprising characteristics. One such meteorite, called Allen Hills 84001, was discovered in 1984 by geologists and researched extensively by a NASA team at Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas, and at Stanford University, Palo Alto, California. In 1996, the team came out and dropped a controversial bombshell on the scientific community, stating that they believed that they had found evidence of microfossils in the 4.2 pound potato shaped Martian meteorite dating back to 4 billion years. If it ended up being true, then these would be the oldest fossils and the oldest known life forms in the solar system. At the time, Dr. David McKay said this about the chances of discovering evidence of life on any planet dating back 4 billion years. There is not any one finding that leads us to believe that this is evidence of past life on Mars. Rather, it is a combination of many things that we have found. They include Stafford's detection of an apparently unique pattern of organic molecules, carbon compounds that are the basis of life. We also found several unusual mineral phases that are known products of primitive microscopic organisms on Earth. Structures that could be microscopic fossils seem to support all of this. The relationship of all of these things in terms of location, within a few hundred thousandth of an inch of one another, is the most compelling evidence. Since 1996, the debate has raged on in the scientific community as to whether or not these unique formations that the team interpreted as microfossils were actually evidence of ancient life on Mars, or whether these formations were caused by uneven patches in the coating used to prepare the samples of ALH 84001 for the electron microscope. But one question was absolutely missed by these studies, and that's whether or not the microbes in these meteorites would even survive the energetic the collision that launched them into space in the first place. And that is exactly what one scientist decided to test. If it ended up being proved that organic material could be preserved in a meteorite after an asteroid impact, then it might mean that dinosaur fossils could be littered on the moon. In 2017, dinosaur journalist Peter Brannon published a book called End of the World. And in this book, he broke down Mario Reboleto's theory for how dinosaur bones could have ended up on the moon. The idea is basically that the KT extinction event might have generated so much energy that it launched pieces of dinosaurs into space. Now the asteroid, or comet, that hit the Earth 65 million years ago was absolutely massive, with was some estimates putting it at 14 or 15 kilometers wide. This thing was so big and moving so fast, about 20 to 40 kilometers a second, that it totally ignored Earth's atmosphere when it slammed into the planet's crust. While these numbers are certainly impressive, they don't really convey how large this thing was. 
Basically, if you want to imagine how absolutely massive this thing was, think of Mount Everest and imagine it crashing into the Earth from space while traveling 20 times faster than a bullet. In fact, the impact was so fast that in the object's near instantaneous journey, it compressed the air beneath it to such a degree that it became several times hotter than the surface of the sun. Basically, for the dinosaurs on the surface of the Earth, it would have been a nice sunny day one second, and then instant death a second later. This is totally different from what's typically shown on science programs around the world. So we're going to recreate it. Okay, so that's probably not accurate either. But the scenario doesn't end there, because this impact, according to this theory, would have punched a hole in the atmosphere, creating an instant vacuum. After the impact, the atmosphere would basically rush in to fill this massive gap made by the comet or asteroid that impacted Earth, forcing tons of material into space, which might have sent some dino bits and pieces into space too, where they might have ended up on the moon. But would anything organic even survive such an impact? Well, let's find out. If there's one thing that fleshy beings like us and the dinosaurs don't like, it's extreme heat and force. If meteorites like ALH84001, its brethren, and are hypothetical... <sighs> Thanks, computer. Meteorites containing dinosaur remains were ejected from their respective gravitational fields, they'd be subjected to some pretty extreme temperatures and forces. Is it even possible for microbes or fossilized organic material to survive such an impact? Well, one experiment and research paper by M.J. Burchill, K.H. McDermott, M.C. Price, and L.J. Yolen set out to figure this out by coating a piece of rock and fossils and freezing it to mimic the same materials and conditions a meteoroid might have been under for an apocalyptic scenario like this. They then took this rock and shot it into a bag of water at speeds of 0.2 to 19 gigapascals. And in every case, fossilized material was recovered. But don't get excited yet, because when the team increased the speed at which the rock was shot into the body of water, the recovery of fossilized organic material decreased, and most of the fossils recovered weren't wholly intact. Mark Burchill at the University of Kent, UK, and a member of the team behind the experiment and research paper, says that there is a good chance that even if you found a fragment of a fossil on the moon, it would likely be something we've never discovered before. But both mechanical drones and astronauts have brought back plenty of samples from the moon and none of them have contained a trace of fossilized organic matter. This doesn't mean that there isn't any, as we've only really explored about 5% of the surface. So there is definitely plenty of surface area up there that might hold an Earth meteorite containing some fossilized material from 65 million years in our past. And that is pretty freaking cool. As a side note, doing research for this video reminded me of, as a child, I would look up at the moon. I couldn't help but wonder if the asteroid that hit the Earth 65 million years ago also caused the largest craters we see on the moon. This is, of course, silly. Stupid past me. While the moon appears to be facing us and is tidally locked, in actuality, it's extremely easy for material to hit the near side that we observe because the thing is like, 238,900 miles from the Earth. Not to mention the fact that most of those craters have been dated to 2 billion years in Earth's past. That, of course, didn't stop young Eric from wondering. And who knows, maybe in one of the moon's craters, some astronaut or robotic rover will find a meteorite with dinosaur fossils in it. How cool would that be? The answer is very, very, very cool. And as long as I'm still alive and running this channel, you can bet we'll report on it. If you dug this content, be sure to hit that like button and comment your favorite thing about dinosaurs. Be sure to smash that subscribe button, ring that bell to never miss an episode of Science Get, and check out the Patreon where you can get early access to new videos, science fiction, horror, and dark fantasy stories, your name in the credits, and much more. I'm Eric Malachite, and I'll see you next time.